David, Todd, congratulations. Your work has advanced you into this final round of competition. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate an iconic blade from history. That weapon is the Cavalry Saber. The Cavalry Saber emerged in Europe around the 18th century. With new developments in battlefield tactics, cavalry soldiers didn't have time for fancy sword plate or thrusts. The Cavalry Saber allowed mounted soldiers to attack with a deadly overhand slash. It wasn't just the curve of the weapon that made it a dangerous chopper. The tip of the blade was thicker than the hilt, adding more power to the swing. The sword has become one of the more iconic weapons of its time and was used by Captain Jack Aubrey in the film Master and Commander. Though lethal enough to cut off an arm with a single swing, the advent of gunpowder saw the Cavalry Saber relegated to ceremonial purposes. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. Yeah, let's do this. I'm back at my forge, happy to be home. My design will actually be off of an original. The blade will have a fair amount of curvature. It'll be beautiful and functional. I used coal my whole life. That's how I started out. Everybody complains about coal. Oh, it's hard. Oh, I can't keep the fire hot. They just don't know what they're doing. Now here's where you gotta watch, you don't wanna overheat. Whoop, your metal. I make my blades the old way. I forge them by hand, I use all hand tools. It takes me a little bit longer, but it shows in the finished product. It's not really cheap, it's learning how to do things, and I'm the kind of guy that wouldn't pay a penny to see a piss and eat a bell of hay on Sunday. So I can fabricate just about anything. I can do custom cars, bikes, rehab houses, so, they want a sword, they're gonna get a sword. And away we go. We're here, Oklahoma City, in my home shop. Behold the mess. My shop is just very bare bones. I've got hammers, fire, and a grinder. No turning back now. My experience with swords is mostly fantasy blades, like katanas, a pirate cutlass, that sort of thing. So I've never tried to forge a blade that large, and never all in one forging session. This is where that power hammer would come in real handy. Every heat, it's inducing a little curve or a little twist. It's just such a long blade. I correct one little warp or one little bend. There's another one beside it that gets a little worse. Ah, so I'm heating, I'm hammering. I'm heating, I'm hammering, and hammering, and hammering. This thing is a monster of a blade. Day two, and uh, I'm feeling good. I really want to make this blade superb, so I pound the edge in. Takes me a little bit longer, but it's worth the time. See that edge on that? I'm basically right down to sharp. Best case scenario is tomorrow, I get this blade quenched and start on the guard and the handles and see what I got. <sighs> Uh-oh. And I see the burnout. God. The thing with coal is you cannot see the collar. And you're trying to guess what the heat is, and just a half a crank could burn it up. The blade is junk. Um, I'm kind of PO'd. I just spent almost two days making this blade. But when the going gets tough, the tough get going. I'm gonna start another blade. Finally, I'm done with all the rough forging. About ready to heat treat. The sword is a beast, it really is. If this quench goes poorly and I have to start over, it really could jeopardize my ability to turn in a finished blade. Hold on to your butts. Maybe it's hard like trigonometry. Look at it, spring. Uh, go ahead and take some of these warps out with a torch and move on to grinding. Every bladesmith knows this sound. It's the dreaded ping of death. And I really don't like that sound. I forgot that when you dip it in water, built a bunch of stress. Son of a bitch. Caused it to crack. Can't even explain how disappointed I am right now. Half the time is gone, and I got to start over completely. Yesterday, I made another blade. 
So I'm gonna really move on this thing. I got less than two days to make this handle great. The handle's gonna be made out of burled walnut. It'll be filed in a spiral, so your fingers feel really comfortable. I'm using my uh, secret magic potion. It makes it look 200 years old. Fine details really show up in the end, so it's tedious. It takes a lot of time, but I think my skills show that I'm ready for any challenge. Mm. Yep, she's sharp. Just keep on going. Last day, and I'm quenching a new blade. If I don't get this right the first time, I won't have enough time to finish it. Well, no tings. Slap a handle on it, call it good. I have no idea how I'm gonna finish this handle. I think I'm just gonna go as fast as I can, but this D-guard is completely new to me. I'm just gonna have to make it up as I go along. Worst case scenario, I just make something ugly. Hmm. Seriously, no bueno here. No, damn it. Be a handle. Not a piece of art, but it's an instrument of destruction. The cavalry saber was a weapon that dominated the battlefields of Europe for almost 200 years. So to test the sharpness of your blades, I'm going to take three cuts against our bag here. Now, Dave, you're up first. Are you ready? Let's do it. Went about three quarters of the way through. The curvature of your weapon and the fact that it is as sharp as it is really did a nice job on that. Interesting shaped guard. But uh, to, to quote a friend of mine, uh, this will cut. All right, Todd, you're up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready. All right, Todd, right off the bat, I've got a bit of a loose handle right there. You can see that it cut the bag nicely. Uh, it is sharp, and it will cut. So well done on that. Blade Spitz, to see what kind of lethal damage your saber can do, I will take your sword and deliver multiple strikes on the ballistic stubby. Dave, you're up first. Are you ready? Let's kill that dummy. Let's do it. Dave, your blade is razor sharp. On the initial slash, you can see how much it lacerated through. Second one made it all the way into the bone. And even on the thrust, with the way your blade is angled, you can lacerate and gut everything that's in there. This, sir, will kill. Good job. Awesome, thank you. Todd, you're up next. You ready? Yep. Let's do this. Okay, Todd, on the horizontal slash with the movement, it dug in nicely. You've got a good configuration with your blade here. This weapon will kill. Awesome. Good job. Thank you. Gentlemen, to test the edge of your blade, we're going to take your swords, clamp them in a vise, and fire a bullet at them. Awesome. Dave, you're up. Tear it up. All right, guys. Three, two, one, fire. Yep, split it. I'm just super relieved when I see those three holes appear in the backdrop. Dave, you can actually see the two points where the hollow point bullet hit this blade. Other than that small deflection right there, blade's held up nicely. Sweet. All right, Todd, are you ready for this? Yes, sir. All right, gentlemen. In three, two, one, fire. Oh, yeah, that's split. So that bullet split nicely on your sword. There's a little bit of edge deflection, but very little. Still straight, hardly affected the edge at all. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, you've both done fantastic work. However, in this arena of competition, there can only be one forged and fire champion. Dave, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Todd, please surrender your weapon. I'm very proud of what I've done. 
To make a blade, it, it doesn't matter whether you've made a hundred or one. Things can happen at any time, just like life. I'm just gonna move on, you know, and, and do better and continue to make what I make and do what I do. Dave, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion and will receive a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm in total shock over this. I don't, I don't think any of this is gonna sink in until my feet touch down in Oklahoma again. I'm a hobbyist against a bunch of full-time bladesmiths. I'm gonna be talking forever about this. I'm, I'm very happy and excited.